In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate fact standard deviations associated with a factorial design ANOVA. Now, it might seem pretty straightforward to calculate standard deviations, but in a program like SPSS and others, you don't actually get the main effect relevant standard deviations in all cases. But I'll show you a quick way to how to do it. So in this example, I'm using a mixed design ANOVA with one between subjects factor and one within sub subjects factor. And there are two levels for each uh, uh, factor. The, the trick I'm going to show you applies to any type of uh, design uh, that's factorial in nature. But I'm using a simple one just for the purpose of the demonstration. So I've got a grouping variable, two groups, and a pre-test, post-test design. So to conduct the mixed design ANOVA, go into repeated measures ANOVA. I've got time here. I'm just going to change the word to pre-test, post-test, pre-post with two levels. And I've already got the grouping variable in here. You would normally see it there, but I'm going to put it there to conduct the analysis. Now, to get all the means and standard deviations that you can get from a factorial ANOVA and SPSS, you can click, click the Descriptive Statistics button. And I always click Estimates of Effect Size. But you also need to add the pre-post pre, uh, pre group and interaction effect uh, in this box here to display means for, but you're not going to get all of the standard deviations. What you're going to get are the standard errors, and you can then convert the standard errors into standard deviations. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I click on OK to run the analysis, and this is what it looks like. Let me just put this window into the uh, viewer. And you can see that I've got pre-test, post-test, and here are my descriptive statistics. And I'm getting some standard deviations, but I'm not getting all of them. And an example would be group one versus group two. What is the actual mean associated with group one versus group two? There's actually a statistically significant main effect for group one versus group two. But the means are not here, and the standard deviations are not here. All I get are the interaction means, and the within subjects factor means 11.2 versus 12.57. That's the within subjects factor means and standard deviations. But what I'm missing is group one versus group two. And what's interesting in this case is that there actually is a between subjects main effect that's statistically significant, 8.648, p equal 0 0.004, and a partial a to squared of 0 0.084. The interaction is not statistically significant. But the pre-post within subjects factor is statistically significant. And I've got the means and standard deviations for that. Three point, uh, I should say 11.2 versus 12.57 is this within subjects effect mean difference. And the standard deviations are there. But I don't have the between subjects uh, main effect means and standard deviations in that first table. But I do get them here. And that's from me pushing those three terms into that window towards the end of my manipulations of the windows. And I get a mean of, for group one, 11.04 and a mean of 12.73. And that is statistically significant. And I don't have the uh, plots of the means. Let me just get that for you quickly. So you can see a little bit visually for those of you who are visual. or principally, oh, those of you who appreciate a graph. Let me make this a little bit smaller again. OK, here we go. So here is group 1 in blue and group 2 in green. And the statistically significant main effect is telling me that if you collapse pretest and post-test means together, you get a significant difference between the means based on this between subjects p-value but you do not get these standard deviations. All you get are the standard errors. I got a mean of 12.73 and a mean of 11.04. And I got equal standard errors because the sample sizes are equal. And this is something I'll get to in a minute about why uh, that's a little bit, uh, possibly a bit unusual. But it's actually consistent with the ANOVA framework. So to get the standard deviation, you just have to know the standard error of the mean formula, which is standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And so basically, I need to multiply the standard error by a factor related to the standard error of the mean formula 
to push it up to increase its size because right now it's a standard error. And what I'll do to get that value is get the sample size, which is 48 for group 1 and 2. It's actually equal, which makes things a bit simpler here in terms of uh, presentation of the results. So 48, I need to get the square root of that, which is 6.928. And if I multiply this square rooted value by the standard error times 0 0.406, I get the standard deviation of 2.812. And that is the standard deviation for group one versus group two in this main effect comparison. And from there, you can report your main effect. If you want to report a main effect of group, because there's no interaction, so it's fully justifiable to interpret the main effect, you wouldn't just report the means. You should report the standard deviations. SPSS does not give them to you up here. You have to square root the sample size and then multiply that uh, value to the standard error and it'll give you the standard deviation. Now in this case the standard deviation is equal for both groups and the reason that's the case is because the mean square error is used as a pooled error term to derive the standard errors. It's not calculated directly from uh, from the data. So I'm going to end with one little thing and then I'm going to carry on for those who are super interested in statistics and want to really bury down a little bit deeper. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that in addition to getting the standard deviations, you can calculate Cohen's D for this mean comparison that was found to be statistically significant because a lot of people don't really like eta squared as a representation of an effect size when you're telling, uh, when you're reporting the difference between two means. So that's how you calculate the standard deviation from a factorial ANOVA. You can do this, you can use this trick for any uh, type of mean reported in this section of the SPSS output. For factorial repeated measures designs that are fully within subjects, uh, it's also a good trick to use because you don't want to have to calculate it by hand. It's actually, or, or through manipulations in SPSS, it'll take you quite some, to, quite some time to do so. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll catch you next time.